Oh, that's right. Good morning time, good afternoon time, good evening time, whatever the case may be in your part of the world. Crisscrossing wires here. And uh Damn, why this one don't want to shrink? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Anyway. Shoot, this one didn't want to shrink either. Uh, oh, finally, I've been battling with this, not battling with this damn Siron all day, man, but uh, trying to battle with it. I just kept getting interrupted with all kinds of shit, but that's how it goes. But anyway, finally was able to uh, get a chance to work on this damn thing. Oh, I'm going to knock the light down. And uh, once we was able to get a chance to work on the damn thing, we was able to get it done. Uh, well, kind of. We almost done. We almost done. Just got to uh, seal everything up and then do a little test. But I don't see why it shouldn't work. As there's nothing else that could go wrong. So as most of you know, the uh, hall sensor. What's <laughs> what's going on, man? The hall sensors had uh, died in this damn thing, some kind of way. Who knows what kind of fluke happened, but. The hall sensors got knocked out and uh, we replaced them and everything should be everything. Ah, oh, let's see what I do with the old probably slung it outside somewhere this is the old hall sensor and uh, like I said when I tested it with my multimeter it didn't test good it tested that it was bad so I put a brand new one in it and uh, I'm pretty sure it should be working when I power it back up. No doubt about it. Um, man, this thing gave me the blues. Even what was supposed to be a simple job. <sighs> because uh, I said I wasn't going to take this motor apart. Because I was trying to hurry up and get it together. So the owner can come pick it up ASAP. And then uh, when I was putting a little, these hall sensors had three little screws that hold it in place. And when I was putting the three little screws in there to hold it in place, believe it or not, one screw, I butterfingers dropped one screw. And that one screw managed to find the only opening in this damn motor which was about that big of an opening maybe maybe like that and that one screw with my luck happened to find that one single hole and fall inside the damn motor so at that point i ended up having to take the motor apart then i didn't have no choice but uh anyway it was kind of worked out 
because uh, while I would have been guessing what kind of shape this motor was in, I got to see that, uh, man, this motor has pretty much all brand new internals in it. I'm a, sh I'm a load of another video. I did a couple little clips when I was doing this. Took a little couple short clips, but I got some short clips of the inside of this motor. And all the other Ceron videos that I have watched on guys taking apart Ceron motors, they all looked terrible inside because of that water issue. So there's no doubt in my mind that this has all new internals in it because the inside of this motor looked like you could eat off everything. Everything was shiny and brand new and man, it just looked wonderful. So, uh, with brand new hall sensors, I know this thing should, uh, pretty much be like a rebuilt motor. Now, as you can see, I got everything out of them thing. Ignition's out, um, and I was also, I said I was going to remove all of this excess Suron wiring. Because I put a new, uh, controller and everything in it. I ran all new wires for the new controller. I didn't use any of uh, Ceron's wiring. Um, that made that made it a lot easier for me. Um, not only that, if we ever want to convert this back to a stock Ceron, it would be very easy to plug everything back up using this harness and put everything back like it was. But uh, being as though I had to take it all apart, I removed this, got it all out the way. So, uh, it'll be nice and neat and clean. Not only that, if anybody else ever has to troubleshoot this bike in the future, and it's not me, it will be very easy to do. Very basic system now. Uh, you know, with the Kelly, and I mean, it's just a regular system. Anybody should be able to troubleshoot this thing. When you got all this excess harnesses, I mean, that makes it more difficult. Not to mention uh, all those extra sensors and stuff that normally give trouble. You know, uh, like the kickstand sensor and the tilt sensors and crash sensors and all that stuff has been uh, removed. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing because I don't ride dirt bikes. But uh, at least it's not going to cause any problems. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, I just turned the ignition key, and as you can see, we got a green light down there. Hopefully, green means go. It normally means go. If you normally have any type of issues, that Kelly is going to let you know that there's a problem. Hall sensor, throttle, whatever, is going to give an error, and it gives some type of LED flash code to let you know exactly what the error is. So let's see if we got some throttle now. If I can move this thing over. Okay, so there. Alright, as you can see we got throttle. I ain't gonna spin the wheel around like a fool. But um yeah, it's working as it should. Then uh, we're going to go ahead and put this thing back together. Ouch. And call it a day. See, I ain't even got the battery in there. The battery laying on the floor right there. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back off. And uh, only thing I got to do now is put this thing back together. Strap it up strap it up put it back together and flip it back right side up uh, I do have one more little small thing to do is uh, switch those throttle switch the throttle and the grips but that's nothing the uh, hardest part is done and uh, yeah we can get this thing out of here and like I said for in the future there is not much that can go wrong with this bike at all and it'll be a real easy fix from now on. And 
anyway I told you guys earlier I'm going to kind of be messed up for the next couple days because uh, they getting ready to work on this on this building change the siding and all that man so I got to pack up everything in this shop and move it inside and out of the way so they can come in and do what they got to do so like I said all my plans that I was going to be doing this and doing that for the next couple days that ain't happening Let's see. Man, these connectors are tight. Now I don't break nothing. I'm trying to put it back up. Wow, that little plug is a pain. <sighs> Let's see. That one's going to be nice and easy. Why is this, this one going to be difficult? Man, I'm tired, fellas. I thought I had got enough rest, but uh, no. Look like I'm going to be on vacation for a minute. So I'll get some sooner or later. But I had also hit on the fact that I wanted to go over a little battery theory because while it's getting cold I'm definitely going to be going uh, into some some battery tech. I'm going to be I'm going to build me a mean battery for sure. But uh, I want to discuss a few things because I don't think people take everything into consideration when they're planning to build a battery. And uh, most of the time, people want to go with the biggest cells, the latest, greatest, newest technology. And I mean, of course, for the most part, people want to do that. But uh, it doesn't always mean that that's going to be best for you. Uh, so, even though I want to use some either 21700s if I'm going to be using cells or uh, I don't know as opposed most people want to use 21700s over 18650s especially those P42s but just because they have more capacity doesn't always mean that that's going to work out best for you because uh depending upon how much actual room and space you actually have and it also matters on exactly what cells you're going to use just because those cells have more capacity doesn't mean that in your build it's going to be better a better fit and what I mean by that is for the most part uh, 21700 has like 30% more capacity over 18650 However, that depends on how many 18650s you're comparing to 21700s. Now, if you're doing a build on a small bike frame where you can only fit a certain amount of 21700s because they're so big, you also have to calculate how many 18650s you can fit in that same frame. Because you may be able to fit more 18650s. So at the end of the day when you're totaling out your capacity. The 18650s may actually have more capacity. If you can fit more of them in the frame. 
So it doesn't always work out that the 21700s is going to give you greater capacity. It if you can fit, you know, a good amount, you know, sometimes that that can hurt you. So you got to map out for all of that when you planning to build your battery pack. That's all I was going to say for the most part. <laughs> Who the hell is Rubble Ender? Barney Rubble, is that you? <laughs> I know that ain't you up on my stream, Barney Rubble. That can't be that same Barney Rubble that I know. If so, I gotta turn all the lights out and, and hide shit. Like I say, everything's all over the place, man. Don't y'all look around. It, I know it looks crazy in here. It looks real bad, man. Look. I ain't even gonna lie. I mean, it's looking bad up in here. I need... I'm gonna have to get... Get some help to clean this place up. Yeah, man, when I get to throwing down up in here, boy, I get to slinging. I get to slinging shit. Shit go everywhere. So I was also watching some videos uh, on Serons and uh, you know the BAC ASI controllers. Of course, I'm trying to get all educated on the ASI game now, and uh, man, I found out. Well, I didn't find out it. I actually confirmed some stuff that I have always said. And, um, you know, I know a lot of guys are using Surons for road bikes and all that. And they're not going to like hearing this, you know. But, listen, the truth is the truth. But, uh, I even was watching some some emoto bros video videos and they was even uh confirming the fact that uh you know serons are the shit far as trail bikes and dirt bikes and all that kind of stuff they do what they supposed to do but they are not a good road bike uh for one like i was saying before a good road bike is a heavy bike when you're talking about high speed high speed uh 
a bike being heavy plays to your benefit as it's not all shaky and wobbly when you when you get them high speeds so um you know surons are, are nice and lightweight so you can throw them around and do stunts and pop wheelies and all that shit but not only that they also have to uh wind those uh mid-drive motors out to a very high rpm to uh get a high top speed you know those motors are good for torque those are torque motors um to be going high speed for long periods of time on a Suron is really not good for it to do that you know you have those motors working extra extra hard at a high rpm trying to keep you know do a high speed and they're not really designed for that and uh eventually especially if you got a big controller on them now i mean if you got a uh a, a stock Suron or a, a small controller or maybe not even a small one a BAC 4000 and it's tuned not for max speed but you know enough speed you may be okay but when you start talking about a BAC 8000 on a Suron high speed man that that you gonna fry that motor at some point people ask me all the time uh, for stock e-bikes and they always say how much power can I put on this stock such and such stock this stock that a 750 watt motor how many watts can it take and uh, normally the motors can take a, a whole lot more than uh, how they come stock now not to mention Suron guys got to remember these are stock motors when you're talking about Surons they're stock man they're, these motors aren't designed to handle 30k now people are pushing 30k in them but uh, they're also frying them you know they're not lasting a long time they're burning them up at some point you can't continue putting 30k through that motor and think it's gonna be all gravy especially if you are you know doing high speeds for long periods of time like I said maybe for a little short burst but uh, they not road bikes man direct drives are road bikes you can go long distance on direct drives for long periods of time that's they're designed for that these motors ain't designed for that. They're designed to do exactly what they do. Have a lot of torque in the woods 